So we're going to get started now that you're here. Um, Jackie, do you want to introduce your guests? My guest, this is Hannah and Gonzalo Hi. from Hi. South Florida. Good morning. We're happy to hear they're my friends. I've known them for years. Yeah, you went to school with Jackie, right? Yes, yeah. Hannah and I met when we were nine. Yeah. Well, we're so glad you're here today. Thank you. Um, all right, now who wants to open up the prayer? Um, anybody? Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much just for um, being here with us and um, for getting everyone here today. And we pray for the message. We pray that our hearts would be open and to hear what you would have for us. We pray over Chris and um, Mr. Evans for for the message today. So we pray over whoever is doing the Western Series. Uh, Andrew. 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 Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we'll pray over Andrew, who is um, giving the message today. We pray that um, your word would speak to him and be with him up, and we um, pray that you would give him clarity of speech and wisdom and guidance as he um, delivers the message this morning. And we just again pray for him and what you would have for us. We thank you and um, we pray. Um, Thanks, Kim. Okay, we're going to go ahead and worship. Um, Andrew picked out these songs. I will just let you know that Andrew is a soldier in the Army, and he is going to be talking to us about that today, um, correlating that with how we're supposed to be. Um, but I will talk more about that and introduce him properly after the songs. He chose these songs. What I like whenever anyone speaks, they choose their own songs and it's, they're just so unique and it kind of gives you an idea of like what draws them to the Lord. You may not know these songs. If you don't know the songs, just listen to the words because there's a story. It's almost like storytelling with these songs. So I found them pretty fascinating. We worship any way you want to worship. We're praying this place. We just praise Jesus. So Andrew is a soldier. And I asked Andrew to send me a description of what he does in the military. It's in the Army, correct? Army. Okay. I'm going to read this, and I want you to try to decipher what this means, and then I'm going to have him interpret, because I don't speak military. He says, I am a 352N signal intelligence technician. Anages, anages personnel and equipment to collect, process, locate, identify, and analyze S-I-G-I-N-T slash E-W intercept. And I said, well, what? I had to text him back. I said, what does that mean? Signal intelligence and electronic warfare. Okay, just to let you know what that means. Manages personnel and equipment to collect, process, locate, identify, and analyze the S-I-G-I-N-T slash E-W intercept. Performs performs reporting per SIGINT slash EW directives to produce combat information and intelligence, establishes priorities of intercept missions for acquisition of desired traffic, prioritizes intercept missions for acquisition of desired traffic, coordinates SIGINT slash EW analytical projects, advises and assists commanders and staff officer in formulating plans for SIGINT slash EW activities, performs duties in preceding skill levels, provides guidance and technical input to subordinate elements or other staff elements, ensures that doctrinal and analytical procedures and techniques are taught at service schools and incorporated into doctrinal literature. Did you understand all that? I didn't. So can you interpret for us in layman's terms what that means? Uh, So what all that really means is, because I'm a warrant officer, I have to be the subject matter expert uh, in the technical field of uh, it's SIGINT, for signal intelligence and electronic warfare. Uh, my job is to advise battlefield commanders and division commanders and higher echelons on, hey, sir, uh, 
that's probably a bad decision. You should do something else. Um, and as far as all the traffic related information, uh, that's kind of the stuff you can't really talk about, but going after the enemy behind a computer. So I'm just going to read uh, about two or three scriptures because it's very clear in the Word of God that uh, if you are a born-again believer, you enlisted into the army of the Lord, whether you realize it or not, you are a soldier. So 2 Timothy 2, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who established, who enlisted him as a soldier. Ephesians 6.11, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, breastplate of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, put on your helmet of salvation. Um, so there's definite warfare, or, um, uh, dress that we are supposed to have every day and uh, Philippians 2:25. yet I considered it necessary to send Epaphroditus my fellow worker and fellow soldier but your messenger and the one who ministered in my need Philemon 1 2 to the beloved Athia Arch Archippus our fellow soldier and then I'm going to finish with this Joshua 5:13. And Joshua was about to lead the army of or the Israelites to take Jericho and it, in 13 through 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. It is very clear that Jesus came as a baby. We're going to celebrate that in a few weeks. But he's also the commander of the army of the Lord of heaven. And we are his soldiers enlisted in his army. So um, Andrew, come on up. And he's going to share with us what that looks like in the natural realm and in the spirit realm. Wow, good morning. Uh, well, so uh, the four scriptures that you just read I actually have on here as well. Uh, the Philippians uh, 2, um, Joshua 6 about Jericho, and then 2 Timothy and Ephesians. So I'm still going still gonna, to uh, go over because I think it will uh, kind of enhance what I'm talking about. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name's Andrew. Uh, I've been in the service for nine years in March, and I'm hopefully going to do 20. Um, and when it comes to physical military and spiritual military, you know, the military, we, they give us all this gear. We have to wear our breastplates, our flag jackets with our plates in it, our helmets, uh, our weapons, and our sustainment gear. Well, back in... Uh, Joshua's time, well, they had shields and swords, and in the scripture, it tells you uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18, it talks about uh, wearing the breastplate, donning the helmet, and the sword, uh, and your shield. Well, your shield for the spirit realm is the Holy Bible here. Um, so in Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 18, it says, Finally, my brother and strong in the Lord, and the power of his might, uh, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because um, if you don't practice uh, in the spiritual realm or keep reading the Bible and praying or whatever, your spirit becomes weak. Uh, so you're not going to be able to prepare for that spiritual battle because afflictions 
they're everywhere. And you see right now, we got Hamas and all these terrorist organizations uh, causing their affliction on Israel. Unfortunately, that has to happen for Jesus to come back. Um, so you need to practice your spiritual uh, strength by reading scripture, praying, uh, and living the right way. Um, um, and in Psalms 144, it tells you, uh, Blessed be the Lord, the strength that teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. So if you don't flip through the pages with your fingers, you're never going to strengthen your spirit. Um, and then in the spiritual realm, uh, I tried to find the chapter, but I couldn't do it on the way up there because it's one of those things that kind of popped in my head uh, where it talks about casting devils out along your way. Um, and this kind of goes into First uh, John 3.13, where it says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. And that's all we're seeing right now is everybody's hating each other. And that was one thing that was kind of coming to me since uh, I was asked to do this was, hey, yeah, I'll talk about uh, the military and the spiritual army. Well, hate kept popping in to my head because there's just a lot of hate right now. Um, and we all know that you shouldn't be hating Should have organized this a little bit more. I'm trying to find the uh, don't hate your neighbor verse. Okay, I'll come back, come back to that one. Um, but when Jesus was crucified um, and those Romans were hating him because of what he was doing, and then at the end, uh, where Jesus asked God to forgive them for they not know what they're doing. Well, I think you should be applying that to what essentially Hamas is doing now. I'm not pro Hamas by any means, but they don't know what they're doing. And the second song, uh, where, uh, where I find God, um, it kind of talks about, well, they're, they're going to be talking to God one way or the other, but by that time it's going to be too late. Um, so you shouldn't, as much as Hamas is doing and ISIS and all these people hacking heads off and all this treacherous stuff, as much as, as hard it is not to hate them, or as hard, yeah, hard it is not to hate them, you, the Bible says you shouldn't be hating them, um, cause they're gonna get their just desserts, um, and, uh, Um, and Second Timothy, because Hamas is afflicting all this stuff to Israel and basically every Christian and Jew out there. Second uh, Timothy 2, 3, and 4 says, Therefore endure the hardness as a good soldier of Christ. Well, the hardness is, are you going to hate them or not? Because God's going to know what's in your heart, and he doesn't want you hating those people. Um, so at the end, when we ask for prayer, I think we should pray for these terrorist organizations that they come to light and realize what they're doing. It's not for Allah or whatever they believe, uh, for righteous whatever. Um, I think they need to be prayed for as they need to realize that what they're doing isn't really the way to be going about things. Um, so in... Uh, uh, In Luke twenty two twenty six, it says, "But ye shall not be so. But he hath, or he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger and as the chief, as he that doth deserve." So, um, you know, you may feel like you're a little bit older than some people in here. I'm trying to be nice about it, uh, but you you have more knowledge than some of the younger people in here. I know I'm pretty young. Uh, Wesson, I think's the the junior in here. No, just kidding. Um, but uh, just because your age or whatever, you could be the greatest amongst us in here. 
Um, I mean, I'm going to be a little honest here. Uh, there was a time that uh, I think it was like 2013, 14 ish, when I was kind of running out of options before I joined the military. And uh, I ended up working as a gate guard or whatever for the post on Stoutfield. And I was kind of running out of options. So I ended up enlisting because of the, uh, all the officers, hey, when are you going to enlist or whatever? And I ended up doing it. But I feel since I've been in, I've had opportunities to kind of help people in the spiritual way. Uh, like when I was going through basic, we had uh, one person that was on suicide watch. He was uh, agnostic, didn't know what to believe, didn't know if there was a God or anything. He was going through some suicide because he got a dear John, and that happens 80% of the time. And those people that get those letters, they don't know. Well, I was, uh, I'm gonna say I was lucky to go to the clinic with that person. And on the ride up there, I was talking about scripture because I had those little army New Testament deals that uh, tells you, hey, if you have this uh, issue or whatever, read this chapter. And there was one about uh, doubt and uh, like suicide. And I was reading it to him and I think he started feeling a little bit better. I ended up giving him that little, uh, that little Bible so he could go through it and I was telling him about, all about it. And uh, I don't know whatever happened to him because he ended up getting uh, discharged. Um, but the short amount of time that I was able to talk to him, uh, I felt that he uh, got better, per se. And uh, later on in my career, I ended up uh, working at Stoutfield and uh, the first John 3.13, where the world hates you, or don't be uh, shocked if the world hates you, about 80% of the people that I work with are uh, like anti-religion and they mock everything religion related, doesn't matter if you're Muslim or uh, Christian or Jewish or whatever, they're just those type of people. Um, and it's unfortunate, and going back to the song where everyone's going to end up talking to God, whether it be now in the cornfield or, you know, at the, at the bar, if you're at the end of the rope, uh, I'll, I'll talk to those people, but they're so, uh, like dead set on, uh, God doesn't exist. Why, why you, uh, believe in it? Well, uh, one thing that I kept thinking about kind of since the last uh, time I was asked to do this was when people uh, say like, oh my God, but they're anti like religion or agnostic or whatever, or why do you say, uh, oh my God, instead of like something else? Well, to me, I think some part in their spirit believes that there is a God, because that's why they say it, whether it be in vain or whatever, because they don't say anything else. Um, so unfortunately, they shouldn't be saying that anyway, but uh, unless you're, uh, you know, reference in the Bible and you're like, oh God, I need some help. That'd be the appropriate time to say it. Um, but, uh, you know, the army gives us our, our weapons, our M4s and whatever. Uh, but in the spirit, you don't have those types of weapons. You have the spiritual sword. Well, what is that? So in Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two, than any two-edged sword, piercing even the divided asunder of a soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So you don't need a weapon of you know mass destruction or an assault weapon or a weapon of war that some of these people say it is, even though it's not. Uh, the, the word of God is going to get you where you need to be. So, you know, you practice your spirituality, you read the, read the chapters, use your fingers, flip through the pages, uh, and get stronger in the spirit. Because, you know, you don't have to be physically able to, you know, carry the helmet or whatever, as long as your spirit is physically, well, spiritually able to carry the helmet, the shield, the breastplate of God. Um, so, you know, some people uh, may never know how much of, 
how much it weighs to carry a rucksack with like all the equipment that I was telling you about earlier. Uh, but it's generically about a hundred and some odd pounds just for the pack and all the gear. <clears throat> well, are you going to be able to carry a hundred pounds of whatever for all your life? Well, that's why you exercise your soul and your spirituality of everything. Um, And then going back to Hamas and ISIS and all this stuff, so the army, we get our orders from our commanders, and in the spiritual realm, your commander, you know, is is God, Jesus. Um, and then you have, like, your sub-commanders or your company commanders, and they issue the orders down. So in Joshua, when he was going after the walls of Jericho, uh, like Chris was saying, uh, God... Uh, told Joshua what he needed to do. You're going to march around Jericho for seven days, but the first six, you're just going to walk around it one time. Well, while you're walking around it, you're going to tell your soldiers they're not going to say anything until you tell them to say something. On that seventh day, uh, they had to walk around Jericho seven times and then blow the trumpets. And that's when Joshua gave the order to shout. Well, if you're ever in doubt of God's power, shouting and blowing the horns and the trumpets at the walls of Jericho to have them uh, falling flat. Well, God can do that if you do what God asks you to do. Um, so in the army, of course, we have our physical commanders who you know make bad decisions all the time. So that's why us warrant officers and regular enlisted and sergeants are being recommend because they don't know what it's like. Uh, and the backbone of the army is technically the enlisted sergeants and the warrant officers are just kind of there to kind of protect the sergeants from any flag that the commanders would give them. They, they back off. Um, but when God tells you that you need to do something, don't doubt it. And that was another thing riding up here was if you're doubtful, do you re like uh, if God asks you, to do something and you're doubtful doing it, you don't think it's going to work. And God knows that you don't really fully believe that he is going to give you the power to do whatever task he asks you to do. Um, so, you know, when God told uh, Joshua that you're going to do this, Joshua knew that if he did this, the walls were going to come down if everything uh, was explained and passed down through order and chain of command of how it was supposed to be. Um, so if you're ever in any doubt, remember the walls of Jericho, they came down and, you know, that's what God said was going to happen. Um, and then when we go into deployments, uh, we have to get uh, our in-country briefings of what to kind of expect and kind of like our indoctrination of how we're supposed to feel toward our enemies. Uh, so I don't actually have this printed out, so I'm going to flip to it, but it's uh, Escalastes 1 9, Ecclesiastes. So, yeah, Ecclesiastes 7, 9 uh, talks about uh, being quick to anger. Um, so in the military, uh, they tell us that we need to feel a certain way toward these people. Um, but if your spirit is quick to feeling hatred or anger toward a certain person, 
Um, Ecclesiastes tells you is that you're going to be a fool. So, uh, you know, in the physical realm, we have our, you know, neighbors or, you know, enemies or these people that don't really like the U.S. Um, and, you know, you may say something under your breath or behind their back, like, hey, you're like, you're an awful person. Why do you keep uh, being the way that you are and being hateful toward them? Well, Ecclesiastes and uh, uh, Proverbs uh, 14, 24 tells you you need to be slow to anger. So you don't know what they're doing. Uh, you don't know what's going in their life. Um, so instead of going straight up and, hey, I, I'm going to say some bad words about you just because I don't like how you look or whatever. Well, don't. Um, because you're just going to be foolish. Um, but uh, I know when I was over in Kuwait and Iraq this last go around, uh, going against ISIS, I knew how I felt and I hated those people because you may have seen videos, you can't probably find them now because they're horrendous, but you may see videos of people getting burned in cages and heads being lopped off or whatever. And, you know, when you see that done to a U.S. service member or really anybody, uh, women and children, like this last go around with Hamas, um, you go straight to, I hate those people. Well, I know that's what I did. Um, so being hateful is something that, I don't want to say the army kind of instills in the people so that way it's easier to eliminate a target. But I think that's what they get to, so it is easier to eliminate those targets. But for me, being behind a computer, um, it's not really fully engaging. You're kind of doing like a support uh, mission, but you're uh, finding those targets and you pass them off to, you know, the door kickers or the finishers to either capture or eliminate the target. So you're somewhat responsible. Um, but... There were some videos that uh, I ended up seeing in Iraq uh, from a couple of strikes. There was one target that we were watching in Syria, and we ended up hitting him uh, with a couple of 500-pound missiles. And seeing that in real life, that kind of haunts you. But at that time, it was easy for me to watch that because of the army indoctrination of, hey, don't feel bad for getting these people. And I know uh, in the Ten Commandments, it tells you uh, thou shalt not kill. Um, so unfortunately, that commandment was broken for me, but I'm, I'm ready to uh, explain to God when I get judged of why that was happening because I felt that I was making Iraq that much safer because ISIS didn't care who you were. If they found out if you were talking or even looked at a U.S. person over there, you'd be probably dead right away. Um, so uh, I ended up uh, helping with uh, probably about 44 targets. But to me, that was 44 people that wouldn't cause any more harm to the Iraqis. Because I don't hate the Iraqis or the Iranians or the Syrians or even their, you know, terrorist organizations, even though I want to, but I'm at the point where I just need to pray for those people so they realize before it's too late. Unfortunately, that's generational. Uh, the Muslims have been fighting Christians and Jewish people forever, and that's something that they're probably not going to change. But remember, with the walls of Jericho, if you pray for it and you believe that they're going to change, well... God's going to be able to change them. He's going to make them uh, realize. Uh, I came across a video of a Turkish senator, uh, I believe, uh, recently, and he was blaspheming against God and the Jewish state. Well, when he got done off the podium, he fell dead. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that can be an indicator for some of the Turkish people that, hey, if you start blaspheming, Something like this may happen to you, too, so you better watch yourself. Um, let's 
so going back to uh, speaking speaking hate toward people and you know the army it's like hey they do it all the time when they do their indoctrination hey these people are bad you need to hate them for whatever reason um, but in Titus chapter 3 1 through 6 it says, put them in the mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey the magistrates, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle shewing all meekness unto men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, shivering, or serving uh, divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another, um, but after the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward the man appeared, not by the works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he had shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So there, I mean, I, like I said, when I was over in Iraq, I was hateful, so... Uh, with this verse, I kind of what kept reading that verse. It, it was uh, verse three of that chapter, um, and getting getting a little bit older, and I feel like I'm becoming a little bit more closer to God because, like I said, I think the last time I was actually going to like church and really kind of going out through the scripture was a long time ago. So there was a time where I wasn't doing anything. Um, and the reason to me was in the Bible when it talks about where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. Well, that doesn't say go to a church building. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just do it at the house or whatever. And I pretty much lied to myself. And uh, it's better to do it with a group of people, even though the Bible says where two or three are gathered. I mean, we have... I don't know, probably about 15 people in here right now. So that's where our gathering is. So he's in here. Um, but I know we talked about like Hamas and ISIS and saying these hateful things. But remember, don't be so quick to hate those people because, you know, God forgave the Romans when they crucified them. Uh, forgive them for they not know what they're doing. And those people, I feel really sorry for them because they don't know what they're doing. They're, they're lost and they're pretty much deceived. So as Titus says, uh, they're deceived. Uh, and serving divers of lust and pleasures, their pleasure is killing Americans and Westerners. Well, at, at the time, after this Hamas-Israel thing is done, because uh, it has to happen for Jews to come back, I don't know if it's going to be too late for them, but God's ever merciful, so he may forgive them if they ask for it. And I had a friend that was a straight atheist, and you couldn't talk to him or whatever. And when I was talking to him, he said something that I don't want to say stuck with me, but it has. And it was, he's just going to do whatever he does and be as sinful as he wants and then pray like hell on his deathbed. I don't think that's how it works. So, but then again, God's ever merciful, and every knee is going to bow. It tells that in Scripture. Every knee at the end is going to bow, and uh, we're going to have uh, peace in the world finally. But we have to get through this uh, this time first. And uh, one one thing that I was kind of reading through, um, like I. I don't remember the, the verse where it says uh, this stuff has to happen in Israel uh, for God to come back. I, I, I had it in my old phone, but I don't have it with me. But uh, one thing that I was going to add to that was what's everything that those uh, Middle Eastern countries have in common? Well, they have their flag colors. They're all generically the same, right? Um, so in Revelations... Uh, 6, 1 through 8, um, says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it was a noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he sat on him, had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and went forth, conquering and to conquer. 
well, one main color of all those Middle Eastern countries is a white bar. And what Hamas is doing right now, ISIS, Taliban, all these people, they're trying to conquer Israel. Um, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And the power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Well, a lot of those Middle Eastern countries, they're taking peace from the earth, especially with the Palestine protest. They had a big old red diamond on it. So, and a white bar. So they're taking peace from everywhere. They're doing all their protests in New York City and all these places. Well, they're essentially disturbing the peace and now they're attacking people on school campuses. Um, and we had opened uh, the third seal. I heard the third beast say, come and see and beheld and lo, a black horse. And he sat upon him, had a, bear of, a pair of balances in his hand. Black is another bar on all those, a lot of those Middle Eastern countries. Um, and when it comes to balances in hand, the balance to them is you're going to convert to Islam or you're going to die. Uh, that doesn't seem very fair. It doesn't seem balanced. Well, again, that's why we should pray for them so they realize what they're doing isn't what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and then, uh, and I heard a voice in the midst of the uh, four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice say, uh, heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And looked and behold a pale horse. When you hear pale, what's the first color you think of? like a green, like a pale green, you know, because uh, I'm sure we've all seen horror movies where pale is like zombie green or whatever, but green is another bar on those Middle Eastern flags. Um, and his name that sat on him was death, and he, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them, the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. Well, we're, we're hearing call for ceasefire with Israel and Hamas, and we're supposed to be, the U.S. is supposed to be providing uh, humanitarian aid to Hamas, but you don't really hear anything about Israel, just kind of like a defense budget, Ukraine, all these people. Um, but they're not going toward the people. The people that actually need it that are living in rubble they're going toward funding these tubes putting them in school buildings so they can keep attacking um so those people kind of like the koreans they're starving they're living in fear all the time they have no peace um, as much as israel tries to make it peaceful when they're trying to eliminate hamas which i still think they should be doing because uh, in uh, the times of noah when it talks about hamas's flooding the earth and we're going to be living in that. Well, aren't we already? Hamas is becoming a big thing. Palestine, whatever, is supposed to be Palestine, but it's pro-Hamas. And they're everywhere if you watch the news. Um, but everything news related is uh, all biased, but you may find some factional stuff in there. But as far as the Palestinian protests, it's everywhere. Hamas is with Palestine, Palestine is with Hamas. So you see these Palestinian flags, that's Hamas spreading across the earth, like in the times of Noah. So, but um, with all that doom and gloom, uh, Timothy 2, verse 4, it says, No man that weareth the entangled himself in the affairs of this life may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So, that's God telling you, don't worry. He's got it. He tells you uh, that verse that this stuff has to happen as much as you want to try to engage in it. You, God says, 
I got it. Um, and uh, if you're still feeling hateful and it's hard for you to, uh, to like, come out of it, I know it was for me, uh, in Joel 2, 1 and 2, it tells you, uh, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountains. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh and for it is nigh and at hand. So you only have to, you feel like you may be suffering because of all this hate. I know that I try not to watch the news because there's so much hate in the world. Well, just suffer a little bit longer because you know the Lord can come back. Um, and then one of the key signifiers is when the Hamas Israel thing is over, pay attention because it has to happen. All those countries are going to come against Israel and Israel's going to end up winning. It tells you that in scripture, but I don't think those people know. So that's another reason to pray for them. Like, Hey, uh, we want to pray for you. You're going to lose. So you might as well get right with God now. Um, so, um, Unlike physical army, God's not going to give you a uh, command that doesn't make any sense to you. It may not at the beginning, but you're going to realize what it means. On the other hand, in the army, there's going to be something that you're going to question. Hey, why are we doing this? I know when I was a little PFC, I was like, why are we doing this? Why are we, you know, why are we doing this? Um, well, you want to maintain your equipment. Well, your equipment is, you know, your shield, the Bible. For the army, we got our vehicles and maintenance and all that stuff we got to do. And if it's not working, how are you gonna how are you gonna fix it? Well, just read uh, read the Bible and the Scripture of whatever you're feeling. So um, you need to maintain your shield and your equipment because you're not gonna go into battle with you know an an M4 that doesn't work or a sword that's rusty. You know, in Joshua's army. No, no one had rusty swords. They had their trumpets. And then God told them, behold, I presented Jericho to you because those walls came down and they were victorious. They took the, uh, the ark out and they were marching around with that. And then I uh, believe the walls of Jericho were actually stopping Joshua's army from getting into Israel. So they came down. Um, so there's a... Uh, there's that. And um, in the army, you know, for morale and motivation, um, I'm not sure if anyone felt anything from the songs that were playing, uh, but I know those first two songs, uh, I got pretty emotional. Um, but in the army, we have, you know, the army song or cadence or whatever we sing that we're marching around because marching kind of is not fun when you're marching with a hundred pounds of stuff on your back and then when you take it off your back's all broken um but we have our cadences so worshiping the lord and uh you know singing along with hymns that could essentially be your cadence for uh, your spiritual because i don't know if you felt a little bit motivated from one of the songs or if you actually listen to uh, music outside of this building um, if you get emotional well you're you're feeling better about yourself because you know that uh, the Spirit of God is with you. Um, so, uh, physical and spiritual. I'm not sure if I saw this one yet, but in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, uh, 20, it says... Uh, Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which in you, which ye have God, and ye are not your own. Uh, for ye brought with a, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, just like maintaining our military equipment, you need to maintain, you know, your spiritual body. Like I said before, by reading the Scripture, and you're gonna maintain your spirit. And with your body, uh, it tells you that you're not supposed to be uh, 
a drunkard or uh, you know a, inflicting wounds upon yourself. So I don't think anyone here is doing doing any of that. Uh, so that's one way you can maintain your spiritual body and your physical body. Um, And then I, for my last thing, um, in the, uh, the armor, we have something called fire guard. Well, fire guard, like I was saying, that person that was on suicide watch, that meant two people had to stay awake during the night to watch for fire and for anybody trying to inflict harm upon themselves. Or uh, in the past, I talked about uh, uh, people sleeping inside their Hummers and getting uh, captured and then uh, killed. Well, if your spirit is like that, where you're not prepared, and like I said before, those afflictions are going to come upon you, and you're not going to be ready to defend them off. So you may be filled with, you know, hate or uh, envy after someone else's stuff or whatever, because you're spiritually not ready for it. Well, if you keep uh, practicing the scripture and strengthening your spirit, you'll be ready for it, because it tells you that uh, God's going to take care of you. Just do what he says. Um, so that's all I have for that. Um, I can keep going on forever about army stuff, even though I probably shouldn't, but it is what it is. So uh, when you guys uh, all leave today, just remember, don't be so quick to anger. I know for me it's hard to not hate Hamas and those people for what they're doing. But you're not supposed to do it. God doesn't want you to have hate in your heart. So, but that's all I have. Do you want your the last song played now then? Oh yeah. Um, so I have one more song. It's only a few minutes, uh, but you can listen to kind of that story the person is telling. Uh, I kind of felt like when I came back from Iraq and Kuwait, that's kind of how I was kind of feeling. Um, but uh, you can just listen to the words or, you know, have your meditation with uh, God and ask him for something if you need anything uh, during this time. It is so not easy. Um, I, was standing, I was actually standing in my kitchen. And all of a sudden, I felt the Lord impress upon me, ask Andrew to speak. So I asked him, don't know if we've ever spoke in a church assembly before, but it, it takes a, a lot of courage and a lot of grace. And it's not easy to get up here and speak because you are accountable for what you speak. But it was so strong in my heart to ask you the correlation between a soldier in the, in the uh, natural army. And then what does that mean for us as Christians? And there's so many um, comparisons and correlations. So thank you very much for that. Um, I think I need to add, because the main, and I know whenever someone speaks, the message is, it's the same, and we all hear the same words, but God speaks to every single heart differently, to every person according to what we need to hear with that message. Um, for me, it was, um, don't hate, even though people come against you and they want to offend you and whatever. If you need prayer because you just, you cannot forgive somebody for what they've done against you, um, we want to pray for you to get that up and out of your heart. Hate is a toxic, toxic thing in us, and it's going to stop anything that God wants to do in your life, and it won't allow you to progress. So we have to get it out. Not only that, it manifests itself with our bodies, with everything, our minds, our emotions, our bodies. So you really want to get that out, up and out. But... So we want to pray about that if you need to. The other thing that I want to ask, two questions. Um, if somebody's here and you've been walking with the Lord, but you have not been living like you need to be with the Lord and you want to rededicate your life because you know, you know what you're doing is wrong and you're convicted in your heart and you want to rededicate your life, we want to pray for you also. Um, the other thing, too, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is your opportunity. Um, he loves every single person, no matter what we've done, no matter what we've done in the past. His blood covers every sin that we could have ever done. 
And because he wants a relationship, it's not religion, he wants a relationship with every single person that lives on this earth, even the people in Hamas and Hezbollah and ISIS, he wants a relationship with them. He created them, they're his creation. And so is each and every one of us made unique for a special purpose and reason. And he has a plan for every single person. And there's an actual book written about each one of us. That's Psalm 139, before we were even born. There's a book with our destiny written out like this, like this, a page after page after page on each one of us. And if we give Jesus Christ our full lives and obey him and live for him and commit ourselves to him and give our hearts to him, he will make sure that we live out the full destiny and it's a good destiny for each one of us. But we've got to submit ourselves to him. That's the key. We can't just keep living and doing our own thing and going off what we want to do. We've got to give everything to Jesus. That's what he's asking. And he loves us so much. It's about relationship, not religion. And he wants a relationship with every one of us. If you have not entered into that relationship with Jesus and submitted everything, your heart, everything to Jesus, say, I give up everything for you, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I need to be cleansed by your blood. And I want it now. Not only will you be assured of going to heaven because Jesus is the only way to the Father and his blood. That's it. There's no other way to the Father except through Jesus. If you want to be assured of going to heaven and not hell, that's that's what it says. It's clear. That's John 3, 6. That's John chapter 3. Not only that, but your life will be blessed. I'm not saying you won't have any issues in life, but the Lord Jesus will get you through every trial beautifully he will give you the strength who doesn't want that your other choice is live life on your own try and do everything yourself struggle have stress you know and go to hell when you die that doesn't sound like fun so if you've never given yourself to jesus christ today is your opportunity he was he's calling your name right now if you want to dedicate your life to jesus rededicate because you know you have not been living the way that the word of God says you ought to be living. If you've been living in sin, if you've been doing things against your against the word and you're convicted in your heart, today's the day. Get right with God. Just get on the path. He wants you right back on. That's it. He loves you. He forgives you. But he wants you on path. Those two questions. Anybody in here first want to give your life to Jesus for the first time ever? Raise your hand. Anybody want to rededicate your life because you've not been living the way that you know you ought to be living according to the word of God? Raise your hand. We love you here. There's no judgment. Okay. I'm going to wait. We're going to wait a couple minutes. Can we just say the prayer anyway? And then if we said it, and we want to tell you, we'll tell you later. And then that way, if somebody on video is hearing it, they want to do it. They don't, they're not raising their hand. Okay. All right. So I guess everybody repeat after me. Lord God, Lord God forgive me of my sins. I want the blood of Jesus to cleanse me of every sin I've ever committed. I give my life fully to you. I submit to your Lordship. Thank you for saving me. Baptize me now in your Holy Spirit. My life is in your hands. Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right. Thanks for that, Kevin.